How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 14, and we have our final regular season game against NIU. And the Huskies aren't necessarily great. They're fighting for bowl eligibility at 5-6. and six. They are a higher overall team across the board. Offensively, they've been moving the ball better. They've created more turnovers, but our defense... Uh, it is just one of the best in the country, especially against our MAC opponents. This has actually really been a rough season for the Huskies. They started on a five-game winning streak. Uh, just absolutely no problem there. 5-0, and oh, and then after their Toledo game, they have gone 0-6, losing to the Toledo, Western Michigan, Buffalo, Kent State, Ball State, and Central Michigan. Uh, they got blanked by Ball State. That's kind of our barometer there. So we're going to hope to be able to do pretty much the same thing. As we're coming to the end of this season, we are in the driver's seat of the Mac West, and I think that maybe we've already punched our ticket. Uh, you never know. It's a video game. Sometimes things get wonky. But we have the lead over Ball State, and because we have beaten them, we should have the tiebreaker against them. So I think even if we lose this game to Northern Illinois, who is at the bottom of our division, uh, we should still make it to the conference championship game. Going through some other potentially notable conference uh, championship races, Georgia Tech leads Miami uh, by one game in the ACC Coastal. In the American, just one game separates Houston and potentially Navy, SMU, and UCF. The Big 12 is between Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and I guess you could also technically say West Virginia and Texas Tech, depending on the matchups. The Big 10 West is between Iowa and Nebraska, both top 10 teams. The USA East is between Florida International and Florida Atlantic. Southern Miss, North Texas, and Rice are in a battle for the CUSA West. On the other side of our conference, Akron and Kent State are fighting uh, maybe with Miami for the Eastern Division title. The Mountain Division of the Mountain West is between Utah State Air Force and Boise State. The Pac-12 North will be between Cal and Oregon. Maybe Oregon State. The SEC East is between Georgia and Florida, with our Teal Boys sitting at third in the division. The SEC West will be between LSU and Alabama. And then the Sun Belt... Uh, I think could still be won by someone other than Georgia Southern. I think ULM, Georgia State, and Arkansas State could all get up there. They've only played 10 games. Georgia Southern's played 11. Uh, if something crazy happens, we could see that be changed up. So quite a bit going on in that regard. Um, we saw just a couple of ranked games last week, I think. I don't think we have too many scheduled this week. Georgia and Georgia Tech will play. Nebraska and Iowa will play. That will uh, shore up that division. They were both tied at the top, so that figures that out. West Virginia and Texas are playing. And anything else? Texas Tech and Oklahoma State and Alabama and Auburn. An Iron Bowl that is ranked, uh, but again, not not great this year. 24-25, uh, they're both 7-4. and four. Not a whole lot on the line this year. At this point, I think that the Heisman is Brandon Brown's to lose. The senior running back has been at the top of this table pretty much all season long. He had a 21 carry, 111 yard game for uh, three total touchdowns last week. And he just has a ton so far on the season. Uh, bowl projections were right now slated for the quick lane bowl against Arkansas State which hurts a little bit. Uh, a six and four Red Wolves team against us when we're nine and two. Feels like maybe we're getting uh, screwed over a little bit, but you never know. Anything crazy down here towards the playoff spots? What does it kind of look like? USC and Georgia are sitting at one and two. We have anything else? Nebraska, Oklahoma State both have a chance to make it to the playoff. Oklahoma and Michigan all do. I think Oregon, West Virginia might have an outside shot. Uh, so a lot of crazy stuff. And the Teal Boys are right now scheduled to play a 6-5 Syracuse in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Just a lot of interesting stuff uh, happening as we near the end of the season. 
I don't think that we have a lot of recruiting to do this week, but we can take a look here. Uh, one player ready for a visit, so let's go ahead and set that up for the cornerback, Frank Blair. It'll just have to be a bye week visit, but that's, again, better than nothing. Give him a couple hundred points, and we are 500 behind LSU and losing a bunch every week. Um, only getting 60 bonus points while they're getting 340 really hurts. But if we can keep him to the offseason, he might be a guy that's worth dumping pretty much all our points into. He is a Juco player, but he's very skilled so he could be a, a really good pickup no matter what besides that we don't have anything else to do with the recruiting so let's hop into this game northern illinois in 84 overall with an 86 offense and an 83 defense that is one of the highest numbers that we've seen all year uh i'm a little bit worried about that it's our first time wearing our away uniforms no it's our second time we played ball state on the road so let's go white out on the road to play northern illinois and the huskies well what should we do with them uh just the black and white helmet what are their uh what are their alternates if you didn't see it you can just go to the video i made on this but uh version 15 again updating the mac We'll go alternate three. Actually, let's just put on the, the Heather pants as well. Let's go all black versus all white and see how this goes for us. So again, coming in, we have one of the best defenses in the country. Our pass defense is the only thing that we're not first in the nation at. Uh, and we're still top 25 there offensively. Not great. We already knew that coming in, though. Uh, definitely been a, a struggling uh, unit for us this season. For Northern Illinois... They aren't looking too hot on offense either. We're scoring more points than them, uh, but they might be putting up a few more yards than us. It's it's honestly pretty close and defensively. They're not terrible, but they have not stopped the run very well all season. So hopefully we can get them there. A couple of visiting prospects for them, so we'll try to ruin their days. And their top players are their running back at 91 overall, a center and a left guard, both at 88 overall. So... Uh, we'll expect that running back to get a lot of touches. Hopefully our defense can shut him down. And here we are. A night game to end the regular season at Husky Stadium in Northern Illinois. Tails never fails except for today and, well, so many other times. It looks like we're going to be uh, kicking the football off. They select to receive, oddly enough. So we can just get the kick underway and we'll see if the defense does a decent job Stopping these guys. 10-yard first down. Pass thrown away. It's third and inches. So right away we can just jump in with the defense and see if they can get the three and out. I don't feel super confident, but you never know. If they try to run it, we'll have a decent shot. Quarterback steps back to throw pressure, but he gets the ball away and it's caught for the first down. So they will stay alive for now. And, well, they try to run it a little bit. Four yards there. Puts them in a third and three. They need to get across midfield to pick up another first down. So once again, what is it that the defense can do? A stepping back to throw in the pocket, and he gets sacked. Jason Dawson, nowhere to go. Couldn't get rid of it in time. The defense will get the stop. And, oh my gosh, well, they, uh, they get the punt away. And it looks like we muffed the punt, so Northern Illinois, just like that, essentially got free yards and a free set of downs. They're starting this new drive. I don't know if you would call it a new one, but they're inside the 30. And that is disastrous, I would say. Quarterback again steps back to throw. That's an open little out route for seven yards. So he gets out of bounds. That's a big momentum changer, though. The defense should have been off the field, but... Special teams just makes a mistake. We're down in the turnover battle early. Had a chance to really string Jason Rogers out there, but he only loses a yard at the end of the play. Big from him just to keep at it there. And once again, quarterback stepping back to throw on third down. And once again, he's sacked. Dawson doesn't have the greatest awareness, it seems, but it was enough to get them in range for a field goal. So we shouldn't have given up points, but it looks like we will. That could... No! It's no good. Missed it left as Nebraska does beat Iowa. So it looks like Nebraska is going to be making the playoffs. Actually, now that I say that, they still probably have to win the championship game. We'll see. They could be at large. Uh, for us, missed field goal gives us the ball near the 30. 
And we can get to work just with a handoff to Wagner up the middle. He's going to get a couple of yards on our first first down. All righty. Let's keep running it. Going up the middle. Looking for something. Cut it back towards a Northern Illinois defender. But it works out for five yards. And I really want to send a pass deep just because I don't learn from my uh, past mistakes. But we'll try to keep it short. Get the first down and then we can do it. They're bringing pressure. I'm throwing over the middle. Serge Mitchell catches it. But he's short of the line to gain. They brought the pressure. I kind of panicked. And it's uh, fourth down. Coach doesn't want us to do anything with the ball, so we punt it away inside their own 15, and now they can get to work. A 20-yard catch, a six-yard run, and a two-yard run from Dawson, the quarterback. Must have been a scramble. Brings up another third and three for us. Can we do anything? Defense has been good so far on these third downs. This one's not going to be it, though. A wide-open receiver. We're lucky he went out of bounds because that might have been a touchdown. How about this? Another third and one. Almost at the 30. We know that they probably wouldn't hit a field goal from here. But can we get the stop? Looks like it's going to be an option quarterback. No, maybe an RPO of some sort. It's not enough, though. Fourth and inches. Defense might have held again. And that is not good news because they're lining up. In the actual formation, so Northern Illinois going for it. Quarterback sneak. He's not going to get it. It's a turnover on downs. He started to go up the middle, but there was nothing there, so he bounced it to the edge, and he just didn't have the speed. So the defense just bailing us out, playing phenomenally to start this game. And we uh, are across the 30 at least this time to start the drive. What can we do with it? I'm checking down on first down. Give it to Zach Wilson and just pick up a couple of yards through the air. Now I think it might be our turn for the read option. Will Wagner get it? No. Bird's going to keep it. He glitched out a little bit, but he gets himself unstuck just in time to get us a third in inches. And this time we'll just make sure that we give ourselves the best chance to keep the drive alive. A handoff to Wagner. Up the middle. That's going to be more than enough. So we'll be able to move the chains and get another set of downs. Well, I'm looking deep again. If they bring pressure, we're in trouble. But it's just a three-man rush. Still getting to us. Throwing it up for Surge. It's incomplete. Three uh, Huskies kind of converge there. Maybe a little lucky. But let's be honest. At the end of the day, I want home run balls. It makes the, the game a lot more fun when I can just have a big play instead of having to run it up the middle for a couple yards at a time and... That's actually going to end the first quarter. So zeros on the scoreboard still. Neither offense really able to get it done. I don't know if it's, you know, my play calling that is the reason we have no points. No, maybe it's the fact that their defense is just actually good. We know that it's our defense that's getting the stops. And this is a terrible decision. But I'm throwing up a four verts to start the second quarter on third and eight. And, well, we found John Wilson who catches it through the contact. Uh, okay. A little bit lucky there. We'll take it. 47 total yards after what is definitely our biggest play of the game. Puts us into enemy territory for the first time. And trying to follow the blockers, Wagner only gets a yard on that counter. Looks like they want to bring some pressure, but we're still just going to run the ball at them here. Offensive line just isn't doing enough so far today, though. And it's another third long for us. I wouldn't be surprised if coach decides to kick the field goal if we don't get this, but we got to hope for the best, and we'll see if anybody can get open on this third and seven. Definitely passing it. They're not rushing a whole lot, and I hit the wrong button, and I hit it too late. That was picked off, but he landed out of bounds. For a split second there, Broussard was wide open, but I couldn't remember what button to press in time, so we just don't get it there. And coach wants us to go for it on fourth and seven. I know I've overruled him in the past for a field goal, but I am going to go for this one. We're going to throw the out route to Mitchell, and Serge stays on his feet into the end zone. Serge Mitchell is that guy today. The 29-yard touchdown reception. And I think that going for it is now the right choice. Sure, we have the benefit of the doubt of being able to see that we scored, but... If we get Serge Mitchell in one-on-one -on -one space out there, it's usually going to work out for us. So the extra point is good, and now it's Northern Illinois' turn to try and do something. And it's not going so well. It'll be a second and 17, and 
And I don't know what happened there, but it must have been an interception because all of a sudden our offense is right back out on the field. So the defense uh, evening up that turnover differential as Wagner gets his first big carry of the day going for seven yards. And we're going to go for uh, a big one again here on this second and three. Hoping for the best. I'm tossing it up for Surge. 50-50 ball. I was just really hoping we could give him another one there. I got the safety to stick on the tight end there, but obviously that wasn't quite enough. So third and three, we'll try the handoff. I see enough space, and Wagner gets enough space on the 10-yard carry inside the red zone. We know that this is a team that we should beat, but the question is how badly can we beat them? We need a touchdown on this drive as Jerome Simmons comes in for his first carry and he goes five yards up the middle. That's pretty solid. Let's uh, let's go to the air again. Serge Mitchell. Maybe if we put him on that deep curl into the end zone. Yeah, I'm throwing it. Oh, I was lucky it wasn't picked off. He didn't curl quite as hard as I had expected. I would definitely go so far as to say that I'm a little bit lucky that that one wasn't intercepted. I'll definitely be looking to him again on this one. Although I don't like that one bit. He's still not open. Now I'm throwing it. There he is. We find the gap. Maybe a little bit forced trying to give Serge Mitchell a big game. I think this might be his final regular season game with us. But it was a nice pass. So that one is good. So is the extra point. Now the defense gets to come back out again. We'll see. Will anything bad happen? Uh, well, nothing bad for us so far. I was hoping that maybe they would just create a turnover and we wouldn't have to jump back in. But let's see this third and ten. Expecting these guys to step back and pass again. Can we get pressure on this quarterback? A five-man rush. And there's the sack. No, it's a strip sack. And we're going to recover the fumble inside the red zone. The defense is now smothering NIU, and it's a chance for us to go up three scores before the end of the half. This one's going phenomenally as Wagner gets half of that uh, 10 yards necessary. It'll be second and five, and we're going to keep feeding Serge Mitchell the rock here. They're stepped off of him quite a bit, and in the front of the end zone, it's another touchdown for the man on the curl. Ed Bird, 6 of 10 with three touchdowns, and we've got 21 points just like that. Absolutely beautiful extra point is good once again. And NIU just can't do anything against our defense. It's third and 10 once again. We'll see if we drop back into coverage or if we continue to bring that pressure. We're having it. not a whole lot of problems getting this quarterback, and they're just going to decide to run it there. It's fourth and 11. We'll take our first time out. We get great field position near midfield to go to work on this drive, and we're going to have to be passing. So let's just hope for the best on this one. First and 10. Tough throw, but we find Serge Mitchell, who stays in bounds, and that's going to mean that we have to go for the hurry up. My thought there was that he could make some guys miss, but it doesn't quite work out that way. It looks like they want to bring pressure. Won't be a whole lot. There's a flag down on the play, so I think this is a free play. I'm just going to... Well, I was going to try to heave it to the end zone. That should be an offside, though. Shame that I couldn't get set to really release that one. We'll definitely accept it. That gives us now a first and five with 58 seconds. And still two timeouts as we'll step back. I'm going to throw the short check down to Zach Wilson. We'll get the first down and we'll get out of bounds. Ten yards downfield. This might be one of our most efficient games offensively. We started out... Uh, a little bit rusty, but since then, we've just absolutely turned on the Jets. This one's going to be picked off, though. No, Bennett gets the catch, and he gets the first down, so that'll continue to stop the clock. Just nothing that they can do to slow us down. So we're inside now, 45 seconds, and that one should have been picked off. I thought he was supposed to curl a lot sooner than that. Uh, I got lucky there. It's been a while since the defense has just really punished us for all our mistakes. I got to say, I'm glad for that because otherwise we would be in trouble. This is pressure coming, and that's Serge Mitchell wide open in the end zone over the middle. Ties the score record for receiving touchdowns in a game with four, and it's just the first half still. Looks like we could break that record today. Extra point is good, and it looks like, who knows, maybe we'll just see them run this one out. Could do what the AI normally does. No, 
four receivers down to the bottom here. It looks like they are going to try to put up some points on the board. NIU certainly doesn't want to be shut out in what will probably be their final game of the regular season or of the season in general. They take their first time out there. Second and four with 25 seconds to go in the half. What will they do? Stepping back. Quarterback feeling some pressure. He gets sacked as or hit as he's throwing. Avoids the sack. Just gets the incompletion. Curious if our coach would take another timeout here if we get the stop. Third and four. Four receivers now to the top. Pressure. Not going to get there in time, but we will get the stop. No. They give him a generous spot. It's first and ten. Huskies take their second timeout on that one with 17 seconds. They're still inside their own 40. It's going to take a lot. They're going to run it, and that run's going to be really successful. Maybe a bit of a clock burner, but 16 yards. Don't think he got out of bounds, so they'll have to go in the hurry up on this one. Now across midfield. Clock is running. Not a good time to send a man in motion, I'll tell you that much. They burned half their time, and this will probably be the final play of the half. They throw it short, and they're going to take their final timeout with one second left on the, on the clock. So what will our defense be able to do on this final play of the half? Don't give up any points is the real goal. But I wouldn't mind it if somehow they managed to get themselves a pick six or just another sack. Jason Dawson continues to be pummeled today. That's uh, just a real shame there. 28 nothing as we head into the locker rooms. And, man, it's been a while since we've blown a team out. It's feeling good right now. I said that we needed to do what Ball State did. Ball State shut them out. I think it was 27 nothing though. So we already have more points. We're really just going to try to put the beat down on them in the second half. Continue what we're doing here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we burn the clock throughout the whole fourth quarter. But there's a chance that we could be seeing the second string offense which is kind of a rarity for us. So let's get this second half underway. Ed Bird, Jesse Wagner coming out, and we're going to give it to Wagner on first down. See what he can do, and no, just a loss of two. That was a great play defense for NIU coming out pretty fired up here. Ed Bird and Serge Mitchell both on fire still, and I'm going to set uh, Serge deep gonna draw the safety back we can throw the weird one to Nixon and he'll hold on to that one. Oh my gosh that is an absolutely beautiful 20 yard catch a little bit lucky I thought he was running an out route there but we'll take it on the corner uh first and 10 just keep passing play action a is wide open Zach Wilson the tight end gets a 22 yard catch and we are flying downfield now I almost feel bad for NIU. Not quite, though. Maybe if we put up, like, 50-plus without allowing them to score. But until... Oh, my gosh. Until they can stop us. I, I can't stop myself. Wagner has a big nine-yard carry there, and we're going to give it to Jerome Simmons now. I expect this to be a big one. The blocking is in good spot for him, but... Good play from the linebacker to shut that one down. We do get the first down. And on first and 10. We'll step back to pass again. They're bringing pressure with the safety, which means a one-on-one -on -one for Broussard. And he's got the first and goal. Ed Bird is throwing some absolutely beautiful passes today. Uh, I'm making him throw a couple risky ones, but some of those are just right on the money. So it's first and goal from the six and a half yard line. So we'll try to make a little bit of risky play here. Giving it to Wagner on the toss. He doesn't have the blocks, but he has the speed to get the corner into the end zone. 35 to nothing. Man, the toss play doesn't work often there, but Wagner turned on the Jets to get in for that one. Extra point once again is good. We'll see what it is that the uh, defense can do. NIU moving the ball really well here. Back-to-back 18-yard -back passes puts them almost in field goal range. And now the shutout is definitely at risk. Uh, we know that their kicker has the leg for a field goal this distance. We just don't know if he has the accuracy. And Well, now we almost certainly will need a turnover. If they go for a big first down. Now inside the red zone, I think for the first time for this offense. I'm expecting a run on first and 10. If they go to the air, they're in danger of their quarterback getting hit once again. They do hand it off for three yards. 
Well, coming out in the I form, they go with a toss play of their own. This one also works pretty well. Four yards for them will work. It's third and three. Now the defense is just trying to fight, not for the shutout, but to keep them out of the end zone. Don't want to give up a touchdown. Another run, cutting it out towards the edge. It's a first and goal at the very least. And it's going to be a good first and goal inside the five, down to about the two or the three. Defense just all of a sudden struggling to contain the run. Thankfully, it looks like it's going to be a pass. Maybe we can get the stop. Quarterback steps back. It's maybe a designed QB draw. And Jason Dawson is into the end zone. He's taken a beating today so far, but he finally gets his team into the end zone. Does it himself. The extra point was good. So now it's 35 to 7. Two minutes left here in this third quarter, and it's time for us to really be fired up about that because we don't want them to be scoring points. That hurts. Jesse Wagner takes a big hit on that one, but gets us five yards. So we're in Mitchell in motion. They're bringing some pressure. Serge Mitchell's going to be open, but he can't really catch that one in stride, so he lost momentum and only gets three yards. That was his seventh catch of the day so far. And on third and three, again, we are going to go to the air. Maybe a little bit risky of a play. Uh, I could just scramble for this. I saw some guys open, but why not just allow Ed Bird to run it and slide down? All right, here we go. One deep safety on the play action. Is somebody going to get open? Will we have time? No, I tried to check it down to Simmons, but I can't get rid of it in time. That's a loss of 10. It's second and 20 now. And almost certainly we'll have to uh, pass the ball. Problem is, they could have some really, really good coverage. I'm going to send Surge deep, and I'm going to throw it up for him. Why not? Give him another 50-50 ball. He should have come down with that, honestly. Didn't seem like the DB was in a great spot, but it's now third and a mile. If we're going to convert this, uh, it'll be a little bit lucky. Let's have Ferguson stay as an extra blocker because we need time for our receivers to get downfield, and I'm trying to get rid of it, but we get sacked for 10 yards again. Just uh, not enough help from the offensive line there. It's fourth and 30. We'll have to punt the ball away. And uh, let's see what it is that NIU can do this time. Thankfully, the defense has just quickly gotten a stop here. Third and 10 on this is what will be the, uh, the final play most likely of the quarter. And it's out of bounds. So they'll get, a, get one more playoff. It'll be a punt. And we didn't get to watch it. The clock expired. So into the fourth quarter, I guess we go 35-7. And I think that we're going to bring in the second string offense. And we'll probably be burning the clock as well. We get good field position. And yeah, I think we'll run a play here and then bring in the second string offense. Just because I don't think there's a reason this late in the season for us to be risking an injury to some of our starters. Uh, we got a potentially big conference championship game and a big bowl game coming up. So McLean will come in at the quarterback spot. We'll see a lot more of uh, Robertson and Simmons. As we'll just try to run through the rest of this game. Uh, maybe let McLean get a couple of nice passes off. The other thing that this does is it just keeps more of our players healthy. The last thing that we need is people to be trying to transfer out of the program. So if we can appease them with some playing time, that's great news. And this is going to be a big one to Ferguson inside the 10 and down across the five-yard line. Kent Ferguson goes 38 yards on a beautiful pass from McLean there. So the second team offense is coming and honestly hasn't missed a beat as it looks like they'll have a great chance to get into the end zone. Jerome Simmons gets us more than halfway to the goal line there. And he'll get another chance at it. No, Robinson has come in for his first carry inside four minutes, and that's an easy touchdown. Could have walked that one in. Pat goes two yards on his first carry and scores the touchdown. As it'll be 42-7. to And let's see what the defense can do here. Pass thrown away on first down. Pass thrown away on second down. Wouldn't mind seeing a pass thrown away on third down as well. Three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Quarterback steps back, feeling the pressure. Not quite. Plenty of time to sit back there and make his throw, and he found Michael Hall for 21 yards. Now, I'm not a huge fan of them completing those passes. 
I want to see the defense get another big stop. And that's not going to be it. A run towards the edge. Lucky for us that it only goes for nine yards. Will they budge? The defense trying to keep these guys under 10 points on the day. Single digit victory would be very nice for them, but they have definitely looked a lot worse in this second half as NIU really moving the ball in a lot of these spots here. So the chains move again. And this time it's across midfield, so they could have a chance to score. Not too far off of field goal range. I'll be expecting more passes. This one, though, a run up the middle and just a broken tackle. Only gets a yard. But they're just really looking threatening. Just need to get some pressure. This looks like a backup quarterback in, or maybe they're running out of the Wildcat. So this is certainly going to be a run. And it's I think that's certainly their running back. Jason Rogers goes seven yards, taking the snap under center. Or I guess that was from the shotgun. But he's taking the snap as the halfback, so direct to him. Regular quarterback, Dawson comes back in. Man goes in motion again, and it's going to be an option. Quarterback keeper, plenty of space, but he's taking a hit. You certainly don't want that when you're down 42-7. to seven. Now inside two minutes to play, and inside the 35-yard line. We haven't seen a pass in quite a while, but this is where Dawson's going to step back. He finds a man on an out route. He gets his three yards and gets out of bounds. That one stops the clock for him as they get to the 30-yard line. And curious now that they're at that two-minute, I think we're going to see a lot more passing. That's a big tackle. Only giving up a yard, and it'll keep the clock rolling. Forces a third and six as well. So we'll see NIU really probably two chances to keep this drive alive. We'll see quarterback rolling out. He gets sacked. Terrible play call. And the fans here are booing the home team. And I can't say I blame him. It's fourth and 15. Puts him into no man's land. And just one more stop from the defense. And they can leave Illinois here with a great game. They're going with the screen. They have some blockers, but it's not nearly enough. Seven-yard reception, turnover on downs, and more boos from the fans here. We can just hand this one off. Ed Bird apparently coming back in for some reason, so I don't know why, but the first team is back out with just a minute to play. Well, Wagner can put a nice little spin move on a couple of guys and pick up a few yards. And I just realized we wanted Serge Mitchell to uh break a record today i don't know if he has a great chance of that but i'm gonna throw one up for him actually i'm gonna throw a couple up for him this is probably intercepted yeah <laughs> yeah egg on my face on that one shouldn't have been shouldn't have been throwing that just take the knee good ah it was worth the shot i can't be mad at myself well the defense gets to play a couple of more downs i'm sure that they're going to be angry with me for the decision making i know some of you guys are going to clown me for it uh niu just runs it up the middle and we'll see if they get another playoff i think that might be it they aren't taking the time out so they will just allow that one to end uh you know we gave them an extra turnover so happy for them there i guess but at the end of the day it's uh Kind of a blowout victory. We didn't shut them out, but we held them to just a touchdown. Serge Mitchell, player of the game. Seven receptions, four touchdowns, incredibly efficient. Tried to go for a fifth touchdown at the end there, and it certainly didn't work out. But, you know, sometimes you just got to let your quarterback heave one up and hope for the best. 42-7 to seven at the end of the day, and that was just a nice, comfortable victory. It has been a while since we had a nice, comfortable victory, and it happened today. On the back of 28 points, all scored by Serge Mitchell there in that second quarter. Uh, we only had to run for 89 yards because the passing game was doing pretty well. 232 there. Two turnovers. Uh, one of them not my fault. A muffed uh, punt that we had no control over, but the other one was just me being a fool. Throwing one up at the end of the game. Everywhere else, though, honestly... It just kind of our defense making it timely stops there. We know Serge was the offensive player of the game. Wade Benjamin is the defensive. He had that forced fumble. He had two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery and a sack on four total tackles. Really just a dominating day for the defense. So that is the end of our regular season. We'll go ahead and advance the week towards our, uh, our week 15 by 
But we'll deal with the bye week and hopefully, I, is, unless something terrible happens, uh, the conference championship game. We'll save both of those for the next episode. And a little bonus, Troy Carter, a 76 overall right end is committed. We've been locked out, not locked out anywhere. We have a couple of recruits visiting, but we're in a bunch of recruiting battles. So hopefully those go well for us. And apparently he was a four-star prospect. So that's fantastic. Gives us 500 points in recruiting for next week as we move up to number 17 in the country. Does that change our bowl projection? I hope it does. No, still the quick lane bowl, but now against uh, Tennessee, a six and six vol squad. Uh, it would be an interesting matchup. Probably pretty even. They'll be higher overall, but we come into that game probably wanting it a little bit more. Uh, and with a more successful season, but you never know. Those are the types of games where we could just get absolutely bodied. Although Tennessee only a B overall, which is the same uh, rating as Northern Illinois was. So you just never know in a game like that. But unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button and go down. Subscribe if you haven't already. Both of those things do a tremendous job of getting these videos seen by more people and helping to grow the channel. And then after that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night, or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.